as a young child, I disappeared uh, for three nights, uh, or three days and three nights, from the garden of my home, uh, out through the gate, and nobody could find me. And um, what happened was eventually they found me and they said, where have you been? Have you been stuck all this time? We looked everywhere, no one could find you. And I started talking about being away from this world, seeing the world from a starship and seeing all these amazing, I call them shiny, shiny friends. When you uh, start growing up, maybe like a teenage years, did you continue have these uh, encounters? Yes, I, I continued with those encounters. And they were mainly in the evenings. I had some during the day um, where I would just catch a glimpse out of you know corner of my eye. I would see something again, shiny beings. Um, and then realized that they were they were trying to get in touch with me. Uh, I had some amazing encounters and things that happened. I was up on the roof and I would see things that would happen in the future. And uh, there was amazing areas of my life that um, came to pass. Um, it wasn't it wasn't a very easy childhood because people thought that I was very strange. And a lot of uh, what I was saying, um, would would happen and they would say well how on earth did you know how did you know about this and and I would say well you know the shining the shining ones the shining beings have, have shown me um, through through the looking glass or through the mirrors um, that this was going to happen so yeah, yeah throughout my life this has always been the case have they ever taken the ship or not yes I've, I've only had three three times mm -hmm. um and with then your the, physical body or with your consciousness with uh no consciousness many times but the physical body only three times mm -hmm. and they were all when i used to live uh, i lived in south africa for a very long time and uh the most the longest one where time literally stood still and, and that was i was driving home and um i was going up over the ridge and as I was heading towards the ridge, a huge craft was at the top of the ridge. And I couldn't, I thought I was going to crash. I couldn't stop the car. The car just went to this amazing um, UFO in a way. And, um, and then I didn't remember much until I came back. And that was about four hours later. And at the time, um, I did get into a lot of trouble because I was meant to be at home and I didn't arrive at home. So they thought that something had happened to me because it was a very long, very long, quiet sort of um, back road, if you like, that had to go past farms and safari parks and wild animals and things like that. So um, it, it did cause a bit of a ruckus at the time. So when you lost yourself like a child, you was in uh, UK or in Africa? I was in. I was here in the UK. I was at home. Oh, okay, here. and then you moved to uh, South Africa, and yep. yeah, and they're uh, continuing these um, encounters. Yes. Okay. And uh, okay. What What do you learn during these contacts? The, the did, contact, they, did, they, did they teach you something? Um, yes, they, they, they do try to, to teach a lot. When I was young, they was, I was with a lot of children. There were other children, not just me. There was lots of other children, lots of other races of, of people. And, um, and we were in like a school environment and we were being taught all sorts of things. Um, we were being taught to try to be more comfortable with ourselves because Obviously, we were slightly different, um, and that was quite difficult growing up. And, and then later on in life, um, when during the encounter in South Africa, they also then explained to me that they speak to many, many other people on this earth, and that they gave me 
some names of people to look for. There were some people that they told me about in South Africa that I should look up and go and find because they are people like me that I could speak to them honestly and openly and we could then all work together. And I think that was the most important lesson was that they do speak to many, many people across the world and that really we should all be working together um, against a, a common goal, which is to raise our vibrations into the next dimension and that it's all possible amongst ourselves. And, and I think that was the biggest lessons every time. It's the biggest lessons that it is the most amazing honor to be able to incarnate on earth. And it is, it is our way to choose what we do with this amazing life that we're given. Um, and I think a lot of people kind of lose sight of that. So it looks like they choosing with who would, they would like to contact. Um, I'm not sure how they, they choose who they wish to contact. I'm not sure whether it's a DNA structure or whether it's a predisposition to having a psychic ability or a spirituality. Um, I've never been quite clear what the reason is. Um, I always thought it was quite random, but I think as time goes on, you realize that, um, that one within yourself, you need to be able to be comfortable within yourself and your own skin so that whatever comes to you to be happy with that and comfortable with whatever they bring to you. But I don't, I don't think they necessarily choose specific people. I think, it, I think it happens if it is destined to happen. Um, okay, and uh, what exactly are they teaching you? Do, do you think that you have some kind of mission in this life? Um, I think that the first part of the question with, with the teachings, um, they, they, they've taught me how to center. They've taught me how to work with light. They've taught me a lot about how to, how to pick up and understand all the waves and the different dimensions and how to connect with them because that is something that's really important and that's something that I like to share. Um, as far as the, the other areas go, uh, as a mission, I think that part of the mission is at this late stage of my life is to, is to get the message out there as much as I possibly can because it's important that the Earth's beings, the Terrans, those of us that are here, as well as the star beings that are here, because there are many, many that are here, that we, we awaken and that we allow ourselves to move towards the next dimension. And that's, that's part of the mission is to, to get as many people awakened and as many people ready as possible. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I, uh, because I'm talking with many people in the world, from the world, in our world, and yeah. I see that people is wake up. They start asking questions. They start looking mm -hmm. more um, in the sky and the night sky, looking for with desire to see something unusual to make that connection. So yeah. this visitation visitors are they coming from another planet, uh, another solar systems, or they multidimensional? Um, yeah, I, I agree with you. I've, I found a lot of people don't look up. I don't know whether you found that. I, <laughs> I said, look, look up, look up, look up, because there, you know, there's so much happening above you. And, and now with, with the awakening and the, the great reset, uh, people are looking up and because they're willing to see, they do actually start seeing. So yes, I, I agree with you. Certainly. Yes. Look up. The time is now. And you will be able to start seeing a lot of what's out there as long as you open your heart and open the light, because light's within you anyway, uh, you will be able to see. Basically, looking up with your spiritual eyes. Yes. Because it's about consciousness. And if you're in the same uh, frequency with them, probably you can see and you can make that contact. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and I believe that that is very strongly what is happening. So many groups around the world. And when you look at you know, CE5 and you look at all of these other areas, it is all happening around us. And it's just a matter of, yes, if you do look with your spiritual eyes, you definitely will see. But not just, not just the night sky. I do find that uh, some people within my groups, particularly that I teach, 
um, they're finding them appearing in their own bedrooms or in their homes. So um, yes, it's it's definitely it's beefing up now. It's happening. It's happening right. a lot faster. Uh -huh. well, uh, why you in UK you have so many crop circles and not too much in the other part of the world? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have an explanation? I think that um, we did some we did some looking at that actually. We looked at where the lee lines were, and we looked at the dragon the dragon lines. There's some very unusual dragon lines along in the UK, and I think that that's got a lot to do with the lines. Also, I think that the, the crops are very easy for them to to create, but there are there are opportunities for similar types of crop circles. Um, in other parts of the world. It's just I don't think that it's it's as seen as obviously as it is in the UK. I do know that the, there was something similar in South Africa we saw. Uh, we saw something similar when I lived in Greece. There was some, there were some uh, very unusual activities. Um, and then we realized that there was an ancient site there. So that was obviously why that happened. So I think it's not just in the UK. I think there are other sites, but I don't think they're not that commonly known. You have a lot of legends, a lot of <coughs> mythology, a lot of ancient places in UK. If I go back to your Outlander, there are there are areas in the UK that if you touch the stones and you touch areas that you will feel a semi-consciousness that comes over you. There are some areas that are not perhaps on the tourist trail, but you can you can have that sort of experience. So I'm not I'm not surprised that somebody made a story and made a film out of it. Yeah. And so I, I said that probably in all these science fiction stories or um, legends or mythology, probably there's uh, some kind of percent real things. Yeah, I think I think there's a lot more truth in it than what we know. Yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting, fascinating. Um, have you been uh, around the crop circle or in the crop circle? Yes, I have, and um, I think that it's it has that it has a very special energy. And it's many years since since I have, but I think that the the energy is something that if anyone can experience it, it would be a good thing to do so because it does change. It does seem to change your own. Uh -huh. energies and, and abilities a little bit too which is great yeah it is do you think that this crop circles is some kind of messages to the humans very definitely yes very definitely mm -hmm. and we're just not listening as usual yeah yeah also you mentioned uh, in our uh, before camera you mentioned that also you are walking mm. Can you, yes. I mean, if you feel comfortable, can you share what can be in walk in your body? Um, the walk, the walk in, the walk in um, took about um, between five or six years to settle down. So um, there was an agreement that was made with the individual that was in the husk, in other words, the body, um, before I inhabited it. And uh, she, she made that decision to walk out uh, for various reasons. And because I have certain areas of this life that I need to, to assist, if you like, on the mission, I need to make sure that there are certain messages that get across and I need to be able to, to show evidences and prove um, of existence of other races of other abilities and particularly of the guardians. The guardians is a, is a very important part of the walk-ins mission. So um, as part of the, the energy or the soul energy that came through uh, after stabilizing, which as I said, took up to about seven years to stabilize fully, um, I was then able to, to transform myself or the body to the type of body that I was most comfortable with. So she had she had a very different um, very different look and a feel and a way about her. Uh, she was also very different towards her family, and um, she had a totally different life actually. And over that period of time, which took about ten years to stabilize, 
I was then then able to get to the point where I was I was more comfortable so that I could get on and do the work that I needed to do. Mm -hmm. That entity is, can you describe like an energy being or maybe something like a spirit? How exactly you can describe that? Um, At the time of walking in, that being was more of an energy being um, and had not had not incarnated or decided to come back uh, for speed. It was necessary to take on the husk and not go through the whole sort of birth cycle and process again. Um, she, she was uh, very tall and she had light eyes, uh, pure white hair and very light skin. And um, she had, she was part of the original cedar races and um, was part of the Lurians at that time. And some of the soul energy is, is quite, goes quite far back as far as the, the fractals that I'm able to access show that she's had many different, many different lifetimes. Um, I don't have access or need access to all of them. I can, through my conscious projections, I can go back and have a look if I need to, but I only, only access the information that I need in this particular lifetime in order to do the work that I have to do. If I understand correctly, that entity is female. Yes, yes, she is. And I believe also they asking for permission to walk in your body. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Uh, Okay, after all this experience encounters um, with different kind entities, especially with walk in, uh, do you did that help you or uh, open something like different abilities like healing, like remote viewing, or mostly in consciousness level understanding of this life and uh, our connection with star people or multidimensional beings? Uh, that that's that's an excellent question, Ivan. Um, it did, it did, it made those areas a lot easier for me, particularly remote viewing, which when I, in the beginning, I was very strong with that and found that very easy. Um, also, it made the strength of connection to other people very, very strong. Um, I was then able to do, um, they asked me to do a show um, for two and a half thousand people at the Super Bowl where I would provide evidence of energy beings and the energy beings would then connect with everybody in the audience and that everybody in the audience would feel them, perceive them and be given um, a transmission or data download into their consciousness. Um, and I was only gonna do that for one night only at the Sun, at the Sun City Super Bowl. And that allowed me to do that, to use all of that energy to create um, that mission control and to create that message to the two and a half thousand people that attended that night, um, which took place. It happened in South Africa and uh, it was never, ever repeated again, ever. And it was very, very strong. So, yes, the remote viewing was there and um, I have a direct contact with them. And I channel through Da'a uh, pretty much every day and have done since 1983. So from that point of view, it gives me the opportunity to have that direct access. Um, And if there's things that I need to know or if I need to know about, you know, world politics or I need to understand what's happening off world, either with Mars or with the moon or with reptilians or any of the other races, I can then just go direct contact, go back in and ask whatever questions I need. So I was I was very blessed in those areas and. um, because I've managed to hone that experience now and I understand how the connections work. Um, that's exactly what I'm able to do is connect directly. When you're doing this uh, channeling or contacting, they uh, decide to contact with you or you can contact with them anytime? Um, I, I, I don't think I'm ever really alone, actually. Even now? Even now? Even now, he's, they, he's, he's always within my consciousness and I'm always, always able to ask. This morning specifically, I was asking about um, 
the situation with the Draco, with the reptilians and uh, Ukraine and with what needs to happen and, you know, whether there would be a false flag with the survival, with a, um, a survival false flag, if that is a possibility. And I had a long conversation with them about what, what the ramifications would be and what their position is, particularly with uh, the Confederation of Worlds is whether or not they're going to intervene or whether they're not going to intervene. So yes, they're always around. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about your books. Mm. Yes, uh, what would you like? What, what was your first book? The, the first what book, was your first book? The first book was um, Finding Your Cosmic Connection, and that came out in 1990. And, and that, was, that was a book that um, I started writing about some of my experiences, and I put the, you know, my UFO sightings and everything that happened. I didn't share about my childhood experiences because... I, I had learned to rather keep quiet about that. Yeah. So, and in fact, you are the you're the first person that I've actually spoken about that in all these years. You know, sixty three years later, it's it's a long time um, to keep it a secret. But um, yes, that the first one was really a novice book about how you find your cosmic connection and you know uh, what exercises you can do for ESP and all those good things. Mm -hmm. And the second, and the book you're going to publish. Late, um, soon, I think. Yes. Well, what is about the next, this? The next, the next book is is really concentrating on on um, da. It's it's actually uh, about disclosure, and it is all about all of the transmissions that I have received since 1983, all of the sites, what I've seen, what is what the questions are, because I've always had so many questions for them, so many questions. I'm just like everybody else. I just ask thousands of questions. But what I've done since 1983, I've written all the questions down. So I decided then, I said to them, yes, I'm supposed to write this book, but what am I supposed to write about? And they said, well, you know, you've cataloged everything that you've done since all these years. Just put that in a book and Eventually, if people need to know something, they can read the book and hopefully the questions that you ask will be the same questions that are in your book. And that's yeah. what it's about. It's about transmissions from the off-worlder, from the star seed, um, from the R, answering these questions over all these years. Mm -hmm. um, so what is the message generally, message sent to you from all these different things? Well, what is the message generally? I asking that question for most of the people who has a contact. And when you give yes. me your, when you gave me your answer, I'll, I'll tell you what I heard, uh, what kind of messages that other people get. Um, I, I think the message I've had over the years has been, you are not alone. You've never been alone. We've always been here. We're always with you. And, and that that's, seems to be the constant message. Yeah, that is your personal message. But did you get the message for, to the world or something? The yeah. message, message, message to the world is, is to realize your power. Very important. People, people just give away their power. They don't realize actually the power and the light is within you. You don't have to be a slave all your life. The power resides within you. Start using it. Come back into your power. Bring back your light and take control of your own lives because you are you and nobody knows you better than you because you have your entire soul and you share souls with everyone and you share the light with everyone. Mm -hmm. I have a friend from, he was born in Peru. He lives oh. now in uh, Argentina. And he's been in contact with me before more of 20 years with um, uh, people, because they look like us, from Alpha Centaurus. Centaurus. Oh, nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, he, and I asked him, what is the message? And he said, love. Wow. Yes. Which is uh, have 
connection with the message you you got your personal message and also the message for the world people yeah. to, looking for uh um how to develop this consciousness the elevate the consciousness to to the level they can be uh, they can have that uh, close uh, frequency to all these visitors from different worlds dimensions um yeah and when they when they uh, when people start opening that mind and have much more understanding who are they and what kind of power they have they really cannot be any more slaves absolutely absolutely <laughs> and then that's and that's the big thing and love is love is the start of it because everything else will follow yeah uh, we are almost to the end of this uh, conversation okay. with you. What, what, what you would like to say uh, to the world now? I mean, that video will be in YouTube in uh, UFO Disclosure Bulgaria uh, channel in YouTube and everybody can watch and listening what you'll be, will be your message to everybody who is looking for this uh, contacts. Mm. I think I think my my closing message is 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 that you are you and the most important fragment of your soul is within you ignite that and allow yourself to come out and be you and and because of that you will find then that when you look you'll be able to look with light you'll be able to look with your spiritual soul and then everything that you are looking for and seeking automatically be there. It was a pleasure to talk with you. Likewise. And...